It's sunny. That's great. But it's chilly. 25 degrees. How about that? All right. So it sounds good. Second cup of coffee of the day. <laughs> that doesn't sound too good. But uh, that's okay. Um, I'm having my first. Well, I haven't really finished it. So uh, I'm drinking through this special cup. I'm trying to get used to it. But uh, it's not really a cup. It's a glass-like and we've got Maria. Welcome back. Good to see you from Ecuador. So your guys are having really nice and warm weather. All right. So South America is the place to be right now where it's nice and warm. It's pretty cold everywhere else in the world. Okay. Glad you're having some time off. All right. So uh, as I said, today's session is about writing a syllabus. And uh, we will focus on the following development of a syllabus for a course using uh, Google Drive. And the course will be on WizIQ and you can have it elsewhere, but I'm going to be focusing on a course on WizIQ and the process of writing a syllabus. So just to get us started, how many of you have written a syllabi, a syllabus before? If you can just add that in the chat box. Okay, so you have great. Fatima, I hope you can hear us because I haven't seen any response in the chat box. All right, thank you for that correction. So it's cold but sunny. All right. Okay, what about the rest of you? Have you ever written? A syllabus before and loud is loud good maybe I should lower the volume I hope it's not too loud okay all right so let's take a look at the the parts and you're going to be doing it today but the parts of a syllabus okay so first of all the title okay it's really important to have a title and of course the title is, or it could be, it doesn't have to necessarily be, the title of the course or the program that you're going to write the syllabus for. All right, so title. Next is the course description. Okay, you're going to describe the course uh, in as many words as you can to make sure that uh, it's very clear and then, of course, there are the course objectives. Okay, what do you want students to be able to do at the end of the course? Now, I call them students, but today, um, if we're talking about online courses, such as on WizIQ, they're not really students, they're participants. And I like that word so much better. All right, so uh, course objectives for the participants. What would you like the participants to be able to do at the end of the course? Now, you can go by uh, a very formal uh, Bloom's taxonomy if you like, or you can make it a bit looser, okay, with um, just a list as you wish of uh, the course objectives. Okay, and then the layout. Now, the layout for online courses is a bit different, but it's the organization. How would you like it organized? Um, what is it going to look like? So you can think of a physical classroom and how it's going to be arranged. So the layout is uh, important, and we'll talk about why it's important in a minute. All right. Other parts are the material. What are you going to use? Okay, what resources? And what will the students be required to use, or in some cases, buy? Okay, so here you can make a list of the different things and programs that you want the participants to, uh, to have for the course. Hello, Nicola from Romania. I'm very proud to say that my husband was born in Romania. All right, what about course prerequisites? What would you like your students to have? What kind of skills will they need in order to feel comfortable in the course? 
So for those of you who came in late, we're talking about parts of a syllabus, and I'll be uh, going over this again. Actually, the only way to remember it is to use it. And you're going to be creating your own syllabus today. So course requirements, um, if it's a certified course or any other course, what do you require of your students? Will they have to write a paper? Will they have to take exams? Will they have to present? Will they have to create? All right, so uh, the requirements of the course in order to get a certificate, or if you don't really care and uh, you may not have requirements, the requirement is just to come. But that might not be a requirement either. There are many courses today where you can just go in, sit, listen, and so on. You don't have to do anything. I don't think that's very valuable, but it may be for some people. So course requirements could be whatever is expected. Any questions so far? Feel free to use the chat box to ask questions, add comments. Hello, Kamani. Good to see you from Sri Lanka. Okay, so feel free to use the chat box. Another part is the evaluation. Now, I didn't put grading, but this could be the grading. Do you want to evaluate your students through grades? Will they be taking exams? Uh, will they be doing uh, different kinds of papers? Uh, will they be writing on a blog or creating websites or whatever artifacts they'll be creating? How are you going to evaluate them? Will you have a rubric? How many of you like rubrics for evaluations? I know I used to love it. I used to love rubrics, uh, but then I got tired of them. They're wonderful to write. I mean, they're so much fun to write. Oh, you don't like them. But to follow, I'm not sure I like them. All right, so Thomas, I think we're in the same boat. Yeah, they're kind of limiting, aren't they? They kind of force you to be in a box. So um, yeah, rubrics, evaluation rubrics. It's things that you follow and anybody have a template for a rubric available? Yeah, I, I agree with you, Thomas. And it doesn't really make sense, does it? I mean, the way uh, it's evaluated, it's uh, Maria says it's a must. Okay, so it's a question of, um, I guess, philosophy of education. Okay, we all have our... So if you look it up, uh, Kamini, I'll share, I'll share uh, some rubrics. They have rubric templates, too, on how to create them. I added them to all my web quests because uh, it was a requirement. But Okay, so how are you going to evaluate your students or the participants? Next are course policies. Now here um, are, again, your requirements. Uh, what kind of policies do you want to have for your students? How many live classes, for example, do they need to attend? If there are, let's say, I don't know, uh, 10 live classes, you might want them to attend five. Okay, that's a requirement. I don't think it's a good policy not to have students attend at least half of the live classes. The policy may be uh, to respond to at least uh, two discussion forms, to start a discussion form. Okay, these are course policies. If they don't follow them, they get kicked out. <laughs> Just kidding. Okay, so, um, oh really, Kamani? Well, I'll have to share that with you. Okay, rubrics. We'll talk about testing, and when I discuss evaluations, Kamani, I will be speaking about rubrics too, but that's um, in a, next month, actually, in January. Course calendar. Okay, this is really important. How are you going to divide your course? Uh, let's say the monthly calendar where students have to submit work. 
it's a good idea. This is very useful. I found this useful when I took online courses so that you know exactly when to submit. Thomas, you might consider doing a calendar for our course for uh, to blend for the um, uh, the course that's coming up for Moodle for Teachers Evo 2014. Calendars are good because they keep you on track and you're not all over the place. They really help um, participants with the assignments and requirements. I think, I think, uh, Maria, I thought you said you loved rubrics. Oh, so we're all in agreement. We all dislike rubrics. Now, I thought, I don't know why I thought you said that you liked them. Um, well, first you have to create them, practice using them, Kamani, and then you can decide whether you like them or not. I, I don't think that you can have um, an opinion until you actually use them and see how your students feel about them. Yeah, because as I said, I used to be very enthusiastic about them. I loved creating them, but then I changed my mind. Course suggestions, and this is really important. The, this is advice that you might want to give uh, the participants on how to follow the course. Little tips on how they can uh, get the most out of the course. Oh, it's a requirement. Yes, it is in most universities. Yeah, rubrics are required. All right, so let's take a look at why have a syllabus. Why do you need a syllabus? What is a syllabus? I mean, I've given you a list of, um, I'll go back for those who came in late. Okay, the parts of a syllabus very quickly are the title. These are the main parts. Course description, course objectives, the layout of the course, the material, if there are books or resources, course prerequisites, what do the students need to know beforehand, what knowledge or skills, requirements, what do you require of the students to do? and how you're going to evaluate them or assess them. Are you going to give them a grade or words or what? And then the policies, this could be the university policies, your policies as the uh, instructor. And then a calendar to help them focus. And you can add the assignments in the calendar so that they know where they're going for each month. This is really a good idea. Okay, and then of course, any suggestions or help for them. Okay, so why have a syllabus? What's the point? That's right, very good, Maria. It is like a map. Excellent. To guide the teacher and the student. I like, you, I like the fact that you said to guide the teacher. It's a great way to organize. And that's where the teacher comes in because the more you focus on organizing your course and the syllabus is a great way of doing it, the better you'll uh, be able to connect and communicate the course to the students. So it is a guide, a very important guide. Everybody knows what's expected of them. I would also call it a kind of partnership. It's, it's kind of like a contract in a way it is a contract between the teacher and the students or the course designer it doesn't have to be a teacher it could be a few teachers working together so not necessarily one but it is a contract between the giver and the taker okay between uh, the two of them anything else how many of you have uh, used a syllabus as a student so you know if you can give me a thumbs up if you've had to follow a syllabus as a student and I can put my thumbs up there okay you have both as a teacher and as a student Maria that's great what about the rest of you hello Ajara good to see you here 
All right, so you put both. Okay, two thumbs up. Okay, excellent. Very good. All right, so the idea, of course, is to communicate. It's all about communication. Okay, and connecting. So we want to communicate the goals. You know, what are the goals? The layout of the course, the policies, expectations, and requirements. Notice that expectations and requirements are not exactly the same. Okay, I expect you to do really well, but I require you to do X, Y, and Z. They don't necessarily uh, refer to the same things. And there are also prerequisites. In other words, what knowledge do you have to have before you start the course? You know, I started this MOOC uh, on, um, what was it, on something gaming or something, and nobody wrote down, you know, what prerequisite knowledge I had to have, and I was completely lost <laughs> in the course. The course seemed so nice and everything. But I, I had no idea what I was getting into. It turned out to be a developer's course. And, I, and it seemed like it was for everything. I think it was MIT or one of these MOOCs. So I, I was completely lost. So I think if they had some kind of a prerequisite, a list of things that I need, I would not have joined the course. So it's kind of embarrassing or unpleasant to join a course and then find out that uh, you really are stupid because you don't fit in. Okay, so we don't want to feel silly. So you need to have certain knowledge and skills. Unless it's for beginners and you don't need to have anything, but that's very hard. Every course has some kind of uh, prior knowledge. Okay. All right, so let's get started. Are you ready? Okay. So what does sharing and caring have to do with anything? Well, any ideas how sharing is connected to um, a course syllabus? Yes, no, the experience would go into the prerequisite. Uh, it could go into the requirements, but not necessarily. If you don't share, nothing happens <laughs> with knowledge. That's true, but we're talking about a course syllabus. So if you don't share your syllabi, who's going to join your course? How are people going to know about your course? Okay, so uh, you want to be able to share it. That's right. You want to be able to share the course. Okay, and the syllabus is a great thing to share so that people know what your course is about. Okay, so it's not enough to share a link of the course. Share the syllabus and then they can get to the course. The course link will be on the syllabus. Yeah, for students that are registered, it's not a problem. But today in most courses, even universities, they recruit students because um, a lot of colleges in the United States are uh, going bankrupt, so to speak, because they don't have students. So you need to recruit students for your courses. So share the syllabi. All right, so we're gonna write a syllabus. Are you ready? Okay, give me a thumbs up if you're ready to start writing your syllabus. And of course you can edit, okay? Remember, if it's online, it's not on paper, so we don't have to mark up the paper. <laughs> we can simply uh, delete, all right. So for those, how many of you are familiar with um, Google Drive? If you could just add that in the chat box. Hello, Halima. Are you familiar with Google Drive? All right, so I see uh, Maria's familiar. Too bad we don't have colored thumbs. I'm gonna ask Wiz IQ to get colored thumbs. Everything is in yellow. Kind of boring, eh? So I'd like the thumbs to be colored. Okay, so just a little um, rehash for those of you who need a little bit of reminders. By the way, I use Google Drive for everything. 
I mean, I collaborate on books, I collaborate on articles. Um, you know, I do a lot of editing for students. Students send me all kinds of things, not my students, other students for their PhDs and their MAs and papers and whatever. And they send it to me as an attachment in, in an email and I just uh, move it over to Google Drive and that's where I work and then I share it with them because I find that I, I can't um, edit anything unless it's on Google Drive. So first thing you do, you need a Gmail. So how many of you have Gmail? Just let me know. Do you have a Gmail account? Okay, give me a smiley or something if you have. If you don't, give me a thumbs up. You need a, hello, Susanna, good to see you. You need to have a Gmail account. Unless you have a business or you belong to a an organization, a school or whatever, that uses, um, that has a Google Apps uh, account. And then uh, it's the same as Google Drive. Okay, so you need to have a Gmail account. If you don't, you need to create one. Okay, and it's not a problem creating one. So first of all, what you do is you go into your Google Drive, all right, and you click on Create. And when you click on Create, you get you go into your Word document. All right, so you click on what looks like a Word document, and then you need to give it a title, because if you don't give it a title, you can't share it. And it's a good idea to give it a title so you can add it to your folder and keep things organized in your Google Drive. Uh, once you give it a title here, you need to give it a title here, and then you start working. Notice there's an editor, and it's a really good editor, so make the most of it. And then this is my account. All right, you can add comments, then you can share. Once you give it a title, you can share. So you go into the share, the share is at the top right. And this is where the sharing is caring heart comes in. All right, so you're going to share this Okay, it's all long. I'm waiting for Google to make it shorter because it's kind of ridiculous, even though you can use tiny URL. But why have such a long URL, a long link? Okay, so number one, you copy it and you paste it. But you can also share your link if you're making it public on Google+, Facebook, Twitter. Okay, that's number two. Number three, you have to decide if you want people you want to share it with specific people, keep it private. If you want to make it public, you go into number three, into change. Okay, now make sure number four, that you don't let anybody change you if you give everybody editing rights, because then they can become the owners, so be careful. And number five, click on done. Okay, now these are all clickable. Okay, and I'm going to share a template with you. So let me share the template with you now. All right, but I'm going to do it through uh, screen sharing. So let me start screen sharing and take you on a tour. Okay, so um, this is a tour. And uh, as I go through the tour, my system freezes, of course, my image freezes. Okay, that's part of the uh, Mac stuff. All right, so now I'm going to take you on a tour. I've initialized everything because I'm on a Mac, and Macs don't like uh, flashes. All right, so let's uh, let's go through. Um, first place we're going to go to is this. Sorry, not this. It's this. Okay, this is a wonderful template, and what's great about it and you can add to it, of course, is that it has a list of a lot of templates for college templates for... Okay, let me go into the share so I can take it for you. It has a lot of templates, and it's public. 
of how to write a syllabus. All these are syllabi, okay? These are all syllabi. You can use them. For example, if I go into this one, this is by uh, a university in the States. They tell you exactly how to write it. Guidelines, checklist, okay? So you don't have to um, be on your own. There is help, okay? There's always help, and that's what's great about these. Okay, so um, go through each of these. Choose a template that you like. Okay, let me go back to um, the session so I can add it. There it is. Okay, I've added it. Now let me go on to the course. Okay, this is a course on WizIQ. And I want to show you where you can add the syllabus. Okay, I've added the syllabus here. All right, over here where I make the announcement in a course. Here is the course syllabus for learn to blend and flip with technology. I presume that all of you are in the course. Okay, and this is a Google Drive. Okay, syllabus. Okay, I also have a table of contents, and you can find the table of contents by going into insert, and then it has a table of contents. And what's nice about the table of contents, you can just jump from thing to thing, but you can't go back unless you fix it up, which I didn't. Okay, so you can go through it, course requirements, and so on. Okay, so this is the syllabi. Let me uh, get the link for you so you can, um, let me go through share. I see someone is there right now. I'm going to share the link with you, but also the course is there. Okay, and this is what I'd like you to do. Something similar to that. There is a syllabus for um, uh, learn to blend. All right, and this is where you're going to be working. So you're going to create a Word document. Oops, that's not where I want to go. Sorry about that. I want to go here and share this with you because this is where you're going to add your syllabus. Okay, now right now it's anyone, but I'd like to make it private if you don't mind. So first join and then I'll give you rights. You write your full name title of your course, link to the course, this is on WizIQ, and link to the syllabus. Okay, so um, if you want to add it to another course, that's fine too. Okay, the course title, link to the course. It could be a Moodle course, but then it has to be accessible to um, guests. Okay, so let me add that. Okay, so let's go back. Okay, there. I'm not going to go back yet. I'm still going to screen share. So the last link that you see in the chat box, okay, the last link, if you click on it, you'll be able to get the information. All right, so what you're going to do now is you're going to create a Word document. Okay, so let me help you with that. Okay, so let's go back here. And uh, this is my account. I'm going to go into this part, into my drive. This is top right in my Gmail account. Okay, so you can see my, there. What I wanna do is I wanna make this smaller so I can share it. There we go. All right, so what you have here First of all, you've got, there's me, Google+. Plus. This is where the drive is, okay? And this is a share. In other words, I can share everything that I have in my Google Drive, and believe me, I've got a lot. Okay, because I told, as I said, I live on Google Drive. Okay, so I'm going to go into uh, recent, okay, into recent. So you can see what I've been doing. Okay, so this is the recent. 
writing a syllabus is here. I haven't added it anywhere. But what you're going to do is you're going to go into create, click on create, go into document, click on the document. Okay, and then go into title, add a title. I'll just add a title. Okay, over here. Add your title over here. Title. You can put it in the middle if you like. Now you can make it larger. Notice by going into uh, this one, or you can change the font, or if you go into normal text, you can start with the headings. If you want to add a uh, insert table of contents, it's under insert. There is the table of contents. Okay, for, uh, oops, I think I made a typo there. Okay, play around with it. And then once you finish, once you have it, you don't have to write too much. Go into share the top right and share it with me, not with everybody, just, um, or you can make it public as you wish. If you make it public, it's because you care. Okay, so anyone with the link can view it, not edit because you don't want them to mess it up. Okay, so you can make it view or you can make it comment or edit if you dare. All right, <laughs> because people are just going to add stuff to it. They may add nonsense. Now, if you're going to share it, you can invite people to edit. So write my email, Nelly, Muller, and so on. Okay, so you can um, share it with me. There's my email. Okay, so um, I'll add this. So you can share it with me. You can also get each other's emails and share it. I think that's a lot better than making it public so people can work with you. People in class can work with you. That's what I suggest. I suggest you make it not anyone, but change this to shared privately. All right, you see it shared privately. And then done, I shared it with myself. All right, so let's go back to class. I think that's it. I'm going to stop screen sharing there. All right. So, uh, are there any questions at this time? Okay, just let me know if there are questions. There's my email. I said I would share it with you. There's my email, but we can share it with one another. And that's when I put the heart, okay, because uh, that's how we learn if we share it with one another. Let me get that heart again, sharing is caring. I think it's this one. I thought it was number 15. There it is, there's the heart. Okay. So sharing is caring. So you decide how you want it. But I really think that it's a good idea to share it with others so that um, they can help. It really does help. You know, I've come to a point where I can't work alone anymore. I have to work with other people because it makes it, first of all, you do the work so much faster when you share uh, the writing, the text. Okay, it really does uh, make a difference. And, um, if you're lazy, like most of us, it makes it easier. So if you'd like to uh, work with someone else, that's fine too. So just let me know in the chat box any questions up to this point. I see some of you came in late, so I'm not sure what you saw and what you didn't see, but this is being recorded. It'll appear on YouTube. You can also um, click on the same link that brought you here and use that link to get the recording from WizIQ. I don't see any questions. I'm not sure. Maybe you can't hear me or maybe um, something's wrong. So can you hear me? Just uh, let me know if you can hear me. Oh, you can. Okay. <laughs> You're such a quiet audience. Uh, all right. So again, for those of you who are not familiar with Google Drive, you go into your account, you click on create, and then you go into a Word document on your Google Drive. Next, 
you add a title so you can share it the title of your course okay and then uh, share it with uh, the world with one another and with me so I can help out there okay my uh, email again and then okay there's the link that you'll be sharing number one when you go into share that's what you will get okay so share top right will open up a link okay and notice the different parts And these are the templates that I shared in the chat box. So where are you going to share it after you share it with, uh, with me? You're going to share it in the places we talked about. We talked about this last week too. So you're going to share it on Facebook, Twitter, Scoop It, LinkedIn, Pinterest, and Google Plus. Do you have any other places where you share your work? I don't know, Digo, there are others. I just stopped sharing it there. Um, I used to share it with maybe 20 different places, but then I thought, well, let's share with the main ones. Oh, Moodle, how can you share with Moodle? If you do a course on Moodle, you can share the course, yes. Ah, your Google group. Excellent, Susan. Yes, Susan, can you add the link? The link of the Google group that you had created. That would be great. Ah, Digo. Yeah, well, Digo. Um, Digo is just a, uh, I guess, a social network that's been around for a long time. So, um, Look it up, Kamani, you'll find it online. I, I don't use it anymore because there's so many of them. I mean, it's hard to share everything everywhere. It would take me a whole day <laughs> if I had to share in so many places, Kamani. So I, um, I only share on these. Okay, these are places that I share my courses on. Oh, you did, Maria. Okay, excellent. I'm going to go and check it out uh, in a minute. So Maria has her syllabus ready to start. You don't have to finish it right now. Just a title. Yes, that's right. It's just a title. So let's take a look. Okay, let's, um, let me uh, go into the document and see. Oh, Thomas is there. I see Thomas is writing. I really would like to make this private. So after you write, I'm going to make it private so other people don't come in. Okay, so I see Thomas has. Has a course there. I'm going to click on that so it becomes um, active there. Maria's writing. And uh, who else is here? So Thomas is finished. Very good. There's a link to a course. You see, also have a create a course on WizIQ. And we went over that, but let me uh, maybe go over that again. Okay, let's take a look at how you can create a free course. By the way, all of you should be teachers. And uh, WizIQ is looking for teachers to uh, help out. So if you learn to use WizIQ really well and uh, you're interested in training other teachers, WizIQ is looking for expert teachers who can teach others on how to um, teach on WizIQ and get certifications. In other words, you'll be certified as a WizIQ teacher, trainer. So if that interests you, um, let me know and um, I'll get that going. If you're interested in learning how to be a certified with IQ teacher, trainer, I will share that uh, with you as well. Sounds good, eh? Yeah. All right. So um, it's kind of like a Moodle, uh, certified Moodle teacher. 
you can be a certified with IQ teacher and train others. I think Thomas, you'd like that, eh? Okay, so um, let me just um, take you on another screen sharing tour. And I'm going to take you to a WizIQ account so I can show you how it's done. All right, so um, let's go into a WizIQ course. Okay, I see. Oh, I see that more people are in this one. Okay, so let's go into uh, this course. Just going to go into the course. Okay, here's a course, um, and in order to create a course, you have to be in your account. Once you're in your account, you simply go to the home on the right. Okay, you go into home so that you're not in a specific course. Okay, in order to create a course, you cannot be in a specific course. So you go to home, and then on the left of your account, you see this is Nelly Deutsch, on your account, you'll see uh, all kinds of things here. You'll see upload content, create course. Okay, under courses, it says create course. You click on create course, and that's how you do it. That's as easy as it is. Now, if you need a premium account, let me know. And uh, if you intend to use WizIQ, I'll make sure that you get one for free. If you work for an organization, let me know because everyone from academic organizations, schools and so on, K-12, university colleges uh, around the world gets a free account. So if you teach in a school, you're entitled to a free premium account on WizIQ. So just um, add your course title here. Okay, I'll call this uh, Hello. And then you click on Create a Course and you're ready to go. Okay, this is how it's done. And then you can make an announcement by adding your syllabus. Okay, and this is the course that you'll be sharing, okay, with others from around the globe. That's how it's done. What I want to show you is something new. And this is called, oh, let me go back, something new where you can add assignments. You can now add assignments to your courses okay so um, not only tests but also assignments so let me go back home to my and show you where that is okay so if I go into my course okay let's go into my courses okay and this course Okay, this course is called, I can't find it. Where is this course? Uh, am I in the wrong account? Oh, there it is. No. Nope. Um, where is the course? Oh, here it is. It keeps changing places. There it is. Okay, this is the course. Okay, I can add assignment. Do you see this? Add assignment. I click on add assignment and I can add an assignment. What I wanted to show you here is that I added an assignment for you in the course okay and the assignment is right here and it says you've got two days 16 hours 14 minutes remaining before the assignment i think susan commented on the assignment all of you have to do the assignment all 518 of you one person has submitted i believe all right so this is really important. This is where you add the assignments to the course. In addition, you've got a lot of blogs. And many of you have asked, where do I share the blog? Well, you have to go into your account. So if I go into um, one of your accounts, let's say I go into Thomas. Thomas, is your account all fixed up nicely? You have to have your account uh, updated. In other words, if I go into my account, okay, into my name and my profile, my profile has to be ready 
it has to be ready okay which means that i have i may have to edit it so i go into edit and i will have to edit my information and if i scroll down there is a place for blogs well there should be a place for blogs there's a website okay and there's a place for organization blog okay this is an organization but if i go into my other account um then i don't have an org i have one organization account and one private um, teacher account so if i go into my private teacher account it'll probably look more like yours so maybe that was confusing but okay so this is my account so if i go into nelly here this is definitely me and into my profile i can edit okay this is what yours should look like you see there's my blog so you go into edit and you add your blog and this is what i'm going to check i'm going to click on your name and i'll check your blog to see that you are writing okay what you have to do is you have to uh write about reflect on each of the uh, live classes okay like this one so uh, update your profiles everybody update your profiles on whiz iq on whiz iq so you've got some work set up for you so first of all update your profile add your blog the link of your blog on your profile on whiz iq and that's what i'm going to be checking Okay, you have to reflect on every single one of these classes. Uh, it's a requirement. It's not a requirement to come to all the classes, but it's a requirement to reflect. So you have to watch the uh, recordings. Any questions? Nelly, my connection is slow. I see what you're talking about. 30 seconds, oh my gosh, I'm sorry. <gasps> I'm so so sorry sorry Tom I really am I'm sorry but you know what Tom I suggest um, you try and find out if you can optimize your connection because sometimes getting rid of Skype and all the other all the other windows is a good idea. Plus, C Cleaner, Thomas, have you tried C Cleaner? This is for everybody. Clean your system. C Cleaner. It's free and it's a great way to. Um, you already did that. You use C Cleaner. It's like Mr. Clean. Mr. Clean. I don't know if you know the commercial from the old days. Oh, you use it every day. And does it help? Yes. <laughs> All right. So um, there must be a way. There must be a way. I'm sure there is. Not much. So maybe there's something else that could help. If not, please, 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 Thomas and anyone else who's having problems, contact support at wiziq.com or j at wiziq.com he's gonna kill me you know contact them either support or j if you don't get quick support and tell them about it now i know you can't afford i don't want you to buy anything i i just want you to connect with wiziq and let them know about your uh, connections and the problems you're having and the delays and so on so that they can help they have different ways and they know a lot about uh, how they can help uh, Danielle you're asked what if we are not teachers can we tutor yes of course uh, that's a great question Danielle but do you have a teacher account on Wiz IQ, you need to have a teacher account. Okay, that's really, really important or uh, 
I don't think you can do any of um, of this. Oh, I see. Just with a screen sharing. All right. Anyways, WizIQ is going to be upgrading the screen sharing, but please let them know about the screen sharing too, because um, I know they're changing it in the next upgrade on WizIQ. There's going to be, as far as I know, something better. I don't like the screen sharing apparatus either because I'm on a Mac and um, it's based on Java and anything based on Java is problematic for me. So uh, Thomas, I understand. All right, so any other questions or comments or anything else, feel free to add them to the chat box. And if there isn't anything else, is there anything else? Or if you'd like to use the audio, if you'd like to use the mic and share, if not, well, I'd like to wish you a wonderful, wonderful, happy holiday season. So you don't want to follow the syllabi? <laughs> Thomas, you prefer me to add things to... Uh... Well, not everybody celebrates Christmas. I know that uh, for those of you who don't celebrate Christmas, uh, happy holiday season. And uh, I wish everyone the best. And I'm looking forward to seeing your assignment. Okay, so the assignment is there. Don't forget to do it. And um, write the syllabus. All right. So thank you, everybody. Thank you for joining us. And see you next time. For those of you that are not in the course, um, let me get the course link for you so you can join the course. I know that some are not. Okay, so here is the link. I'm going to share it in the chat box, the link to the course. And there is a certificate at the end of the course. Okay, the certificate will be available, signed by me. And if you need a letter to your school or organization, I'll be happy to write the letter at the end of June 2014. Yes, Thomas. Yes. Copy the chat, everybody. Let's see who copies it, who adds it to the course feed first. Right. Copy the chat. Bye, everyone. This will be um, uploaded to YouTube without your names, of course. I'm just including the, uh, the images so um, you won't be seen. Thank you, everyone. Merry Christmas. Happy holiday season. Wonderful, Susan. You make me proud. Excellent. Don't forget that you have to respond, uh, start a discussion in the course feed and respond to somebody else. Okay, don't forget that part too. Follow the syllabus for the course so that you don't forget anything. Bye-bye.